Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all having the best day ever. Very, very, very excited to be continuing on with the email series. Now, if you don't know what this is, I have an email and it's adammcintyrehelp at gmail.com. And basically the muckers will email in with things that are going on in their life. And they're basically wanting a little bit of advice or what I would do in the situation. And I will say at the start of every one of these videos, and I will continue to say it, I am not someone that you should be taking advice from, but sometimes maybe you need to hear advice from someone that you maybe shouldn't take advice from. Anyways, very excited for this one. I am practically living in this Dollywood hoodie at this stage. Do I miss the cinnamon bread from Dollywood? Absolutely. Have I been thinking about it since I've left Dollywood? Absolutely. Have I also been thinking about the fact that they had this like sausage thing that was wrapped in like crisps, chips you would say in America? Yeah, I can't stop thinking about that either. Apple pie out there, the fact that you could buy like a whole apple pie for like $300 and it was so heavy. And we got one slice and it was like $30. I've been thinking a lot about Dollywood. I'm really living the Dollywood experience right now with the Dollywood bear, permanent resident apparently of this sofa. Anyways, let's get into this. So please continue to email me with ones that are going on in your life so that I can continue making these videos. All right. I have a bunch here loaded up and we're just going to go through them. So this first one says, Dear Adam, I have boyfriend drama. Hit me with it. We've been dating for six months, but have known each other for a very long time. About two months, two months, hello, into our relationship, he was having severe lung pain and told me he was quitting smoking. Okay. I supported him through that. Knowing addiction is obviously very hard to stop. And two months later, I find out he was smoking the entire time and hiding it from me. We basically lived together since we were five minutes away. I'd be at his apartment from 1 p.m. until 3 a.m. like every day. And he kept this from me. Wow. Did you not notice he would come back stinking of smoke? Wow. Okay. Um, we basically lived together. Like I said, I would be in his apartment from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. And he kept it from me. Obviously, I caught him at some points or caught on. I tasted cigarettes or vape when he would kiss me. I smelled smoke in his car. Oh, here we go. And he had tons of excuses. But one day, I just couldn't take it. I noticed he was going to the bathroom for a while. Ah, that's how he, that's how he does it. And decided to go in after him. Could you imagine he was just like having a shit or having a piss or something? And you walk in trying to bust him. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> um... All right, I couldn't take it. I noticed he was in the bathroom for a while, so I decided to go in after him. I find a vape in a bathroom drawer, and we had a big fight about it. Mostly just me being mad at him and him apologizing, but not over smoking, over him lying to me for months. I don't give an actual F if he vapes, but he lied to me for months about it. I have past relationship trauma from being manipulated or manipulated. Hello, manipulated. I'm filming this at 7 a.m. by the way, and I haven't slept, so I just I'm having sleepover vibes right now, and that comes with a little bit of delusion in my brain. Um, you know, from being manipulated and gaslit and told him even before we dated that I needed him to be honest with me. So he said he'd stopped and apologized a million times. Now, in the past couple months, he's moved away, and I helped him move a ton. I spent days cleaning out his apartment, packing, even borrowing my sister's SUV to drive stuff to his new apartment 35 minutes away. We obviously see each other less since he's so far out. Last night, we were watching YouTube on the TV. Adam McIntyre, I hope. <laughs> and he goes to make tacos. Ooh, I could go for some tacos. Maybe I'm just hungry. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, he goes to make uh, tacos. Uh, he peeks his head back into the living room to say um, he's gone to pee. Um, I saw something in his hand. Um, out of the corner of my eye. A fucking vape. I confront him again. He tries gaslighting me into saying that he didn't have one. I hold up one finger, signaling one chance to come clean about lying to me. He defends himself again. I sit back down, eat my taco, go to the bathroom. I find another drawer with vapes in it. Now I take it in my hand and show him. I said, we need to talk. He tries saying it's not his. Guess what? Who else is it? So we fight again. He'd rather keep things from me instead of just talking to me about his struggles. I know addiction can be embarrassing, but he's been lying and gaslighting me for months. That's what I'm upset about. His lies and manipulation. How can I trust him, Mama Mucker? Do you think my feelings are valid? Am I overreacting? I don't know what to do. He's been so amazing, but lying is such a huge problem for me. Please help. Okay. Here's my thing. As someone who has dabbled in smoking and dabbled in vaping if you will 
that shit is hard to quit. It is really hard to quit. And it is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly embarrassing when you want to quit and you're doing it less, but you still do it and you're like hiding it from everyone. Like that guilt eats you up so much. The same way with like any addiction, you know, different varying levels, right? It is embarrassing for a lot of people. Some people don't care, but it's embarrassing for a lot of people. And I know for me specifically, this has been an ongoing thing that I've dealt with um, ever since I tasted my first bit of nicotine. And it it has been a struggle. And there have been so many times in my life where I've quit for months. There's been times where I've quit for weeks. There's been times where I've quit for days, whatever it may be. And it's basically, it's something now that like, if I ever struggle with it, like if I ever pick up a vape again or something like that, I keep all that shit to myself because it's so embarrassing to talk about. But like it is it is something that like you you get so addicted to, you know what I mean? And obviously it's not good for you. And everyone who is addicted to it is aware of that, you know, nicotine in, in any form. Um, and it's really embarrassing to come to terms with specifically if you feel like you're letting everyone down, which you do and it's like this ongoing battle where you feel so guilty for letting your people down but you're also trying so desperately to quit and then the stress of it what do you want you know what i mean so it's it's a really stressful thing what i'm gonna say is i don't think you're overreacting on the basis of being lied to i do think this stems though and i do have sympathy for the fact that he feels the need to keep it from you that he like doesn't want to disappoint you and stuff like that but I don't think you're overreacting you know for feeling like you're being lied to because ultimately you are but I also do understand his point of view I think the only thing to do from here because you said he's been amazing other than this is to have like a final conversation with him where you go you sit him down and you say listen I know you are keeping this from me and stuff like that like can we just have honesty like you can say, I'll help you through this. I'll not judge you while you're going through this process. You know how I feel about it. You know I don't like you doing it. But I would much rather you feel like you don't have to hide stuff from me. Because if he ultimately feels he has to hide this from you for whatever reason, he may start hiding other things. And I understand, you know, it coming from this place of embarrassment and, you know, feeling down about himself. But ultimately, you feel lied to and you are being lied to. So you're not overreacting. But... I do feel sympathy towards how embarrassing it can be. Um, it's an iffy one. It's an iffy one. But I appreciate you writing in. Okay. Next one says, Boyfriend's Crazy Family. Love the title of this one already. Hey, Adam, I choose to remain anonymous. You know how I feel about that? I love when people say they choose to stay anonymous. You know why? Because it means that it's going to be, we're in for a show, honey. This situation is so absolutely ridiculous and childish. Give it to me. Show it to me, Rachel. But I literally have no one else to tell, so here you go. I am a 20-year-old, and he's a 20-year-old. I started dating my boyfriend December of 2022. We met online and surprisingly lived 10 minutes from each other. Amazing. Everything was great, and we got super well along super well until I met this man's family. He is so damn babied by his family, and I mean in every absolute way. His mother does every single little thing for him every day. I find that a bit weird, but I never thought much of it at the beginning. We are about six months into the relationship, and his cousin, 18-year-old, starts to tell me that his mom and his sister, his sister is in her late 30s, have been talking-ish about me behind my back, saying I want to trap him with a baby because she found out we were being intimate. I don't even know how she found that out, saying I was too mature for my age. I'm a grown woman, and saying I was going to leave him... After I used him, um, wait, and saying I was going to leave him after I used him for a while, yeah, because he's so wealthy and definitely the type of man I'd use, he works a part-time job anyway. So basically implying that, you know, this person wasn't, this person is not trying to use the boyfriend in any way, even though the family are insinuating that. A few months go by of me constantly hearing my name in their mouths and not saying anything because I want to be nice. Turns out his sister has been doing the day they do what his sister's been doing they do on me in order for me to br for in order for us to break up what the fuck i really don't feel it's affecting me in any way lol <laughs> she said 
loser. <laughs> she said, it's not working. <laughs> she said, try harder. <laughs> But who does that? You're 37 years old. His cousin was the one who usually gave me the inside scoop. Me and her got into a small argument and she turned the situation around on me and told his sister that I was doing voodoo on her. His sister sends my boyfriend a long ass paragraph telling him I am the problem, that he's dating the devil, that I am toxic and disgusting with no life. And she has never had more than a 10 minute conversation with me at all. And she's saying all this. Once again, I was so fucking furious and still said nothing but, you know, absolutely bitch. I, the fact that my boyfriend had zero backbone towards his family and won't even defend me. He's a nice man and we get along really well. And we always have had a really healthy relationship between each other. But I cannot stand his two-faced family. This was all so unexplained to me and I have absolutely zero idea where any of it came from. There's so much more to the story, but I want to keep it short. What should I do? Should I confront the sister about the paragraph? Confront his cousin about switching up on me? Confront his mom and his daughter's behavior? I don't know what to do. I don't want to ruin my relationship. Okay, here's the thing. If they are babying him so much, it means that no relationship will ever be good enough. Like, they don't want him to be in a relationship because they don't want him to be taken care of or looked after if you will by anyone else that's their job in their eyes which is crazy because he's 20 years old and he's grown this is a conversation listen if this was me i would evade all the family and go straight to your partner and say this is happening and you're not defending me number one why are you not defending me and number two what is their problem with me? And if he cannot give you a definitive answer, this may be the end of the relationship. No matter how great he is to you, what? Are you going to be permanently in this with the family talking shit about you and putting VD tricks on you? No. You need to go directly to him and say, listen, like, this is make or break. Like, why are your family treating me this way? <laughs> and good luck with that. And good luck with that. Okay. Hmm, which one do I want to do next? Wow, y'all are going through a lot right now. Okay, woo. Dating a father, question mark. Please keep me anonymous. <laughs> I'm sure. Love ya. I'll tell you if I love you too at the end of this. I desperately need advice. I got out of a long-term relationship two years ago and have just started dating again a few months ago. Mostly dating apps. Gross, I know. Hey, there's no shame in that. That's all we've got these days. I genuinely was only interested in friends with benefits. Okay. I did eventually want a long-term partner though, but I started talking to this specific guy and as corny as it sounds, he really is different. That does sound corny. I am someone who no longer believes in love. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I also want to give a PSA to everyone. Um, I'm someone who uh, genuinely does not believe in love anymore. Um, so I will always give you the most cynical approach when it comes to love. <laughs> He's the one. He's different. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Completely from my ex, very important, and all the other guys that I've been seeing. He works a ton, but still makes a solid effort to stay in contact with me and is the sweetest soul. But he has a three-year-old daughter. Bum, bum, bum. I adore kids, but did not plan to have any of my own. It's something I said I would consider at 30. I'm 25. I never even considered a stepchild. I have two step parents who I consider my actual parents. So becoming one is a huge deal to me. And I think that's a good point where you're saying that, you know, you you're really close to your step parents. So you understand the dynamic would be with this child that you would also be really close because that's your, you know, step parent that you've lived with. You know what I mean? That idea of it. Um, because some people are step parents and they don't want to be involved in the child's life. But you're saying that you're so used to them being the parent to you that you would replicate that, I guess. Interesting. I was not looking for a long-term relationship right now, let alone the potential of becoming a mother. Oh my God. But this man is amazing and he's a wonderful father, which makes him even hotter. My concern is that he may not have... My concern is that he may not have time for me at the moment. When he's not working, he has his daughter and it's way too soon for me to meet her. So there's very limited time that we can see each other. This is really hard for me because if it were up to me, I'd see the person I'm dating, my friends with benefits, at least twice a week. See, here's the thing. 
People have different perceptions of friends with benefits. Some people's friendship, be- friends with benefits is, yeah, seeing multiple times a week. Some's that once a month, once a year, once when they're in the country, when they're in the city. You know, this is the thing. When you, friends with benefits, if one person, you know, catches feelings. Mm-mm-mm. I mean, have you stated that he was really into you? You said he's really different. And he makes an effort to stay in contact with you. Okay. Is he just looking at you as a friends with benefits though? I mean, I don't, I don't mean to sound rude, but like I'm being realistic here. That's something that would be really hard for him to offer right now, which is probably why he wanted a friends with benefits. But I feel like as time goes on and I can be around his daughter, I'll be able to see him more. It just almost physically pains me to not be able to see him in person once a week max this is why some people can't do friends with benefits and you know he's one of those people moi anyways i don't know what to do i really need to see him more often but it's not easy for him and he really does try so i can't be mad at him moral of the story i'm so darn bad for this man and i would continue to date him and be patient with him um i 100 percent think it's worth it's really hard for me to do should i like invest all this time And just be patient. Thank you in advance. Thank you for reading this, my love. All right. I'm sending you so much love. (sighs) All right. Do I think you should invest everything into this? No. Listen, if you're so damn bad for him, and you know when you're so damn bad for someone that you're willing to make excuses and all like this, right? I'll let you be damn bad for him. I think you need to understand, though, that maybe he looks at this more as a friends of benefits, which is why he's prioritizing other things instead of seeing you. And I'm not just talking about the daughter, but like, you know, it's too soon for you to see the daughter. So this isn't really great timing for either of you. So in turn, you're not seeing each other that often. Maybe this is a case where if you really like him, you know, you can wait out the friends of benefits period and see if it goes anywhere. But you also have to know that maybe he looks at you just as a friends of benefits and maybe he also has other people he sees as friends of benefits maybe not maybe but what i think you should do because i understand what it's like to be done bad for someone i would continue seeing him as little or as often as you do but also continue to be on dating apps and continue dating don't close everything off for this man at least right now at least right now If I'm being honest with you, you know, don't close it off just right now. Um, I don't think that is the best case scenario right now. If I'm being honest with you, but I understand how it's like being down bad with someone. Go through the motions. Go through the motions. Okay, let's go to another one. Whoa, there's like, there's more than usual that's going on. Some of these headings are crazy. If you want me to read one of yours, by the way, make your heading as like crazy as possible because these are crazy. Okay. Oh, this one seems interesting, though. Tweens and iPhones. Help. Anonymous, please. Of course. Hey, Adam, love your videos. I thought this might be an interesting question. Since you aren't a parent and can't really relate. Okay. Maybe you could offer some advice. Nothing serious. But the more I thought of it, the more I think you could actually provide a helpful perspective. See? Never underestimate the mother mucker. And I'm probably going to give the worst advice ever. My oldest child is about to be 11, which is the age we told him we would get him a phone. That day seemed forever ago, but here we are. We are getting him a phone just for safety. He'll be going to a middle school and it feels like the right time, you know, that he'll have the ability to call, text us in case of emergencies. Of course, I want him to communicate with his friends as well. I've already decided there will be mega restrictions in place. No social media, not able to download apps without oversights, time limits, Google search safety, Internet browser completely turned off. Haven't quite decided yet. I'm worried about his safety, but I'm also worried about him being influenced by the internet and growing up too fast. Okay, you're coming to the perfect person. As someone who... (laughs) A lot happened for me online. Uh, (laughs) I've always been careful about my kids' screen time. It's easy to do when you're 100% in control of their, you know, screens. But now he'll be pressured more than ever to have social media or have his own TikTok, etc. Stuff 10-year-olds are already doing, which is insane to me. I see the negative impact it's having on kids these days and desperately want my kids not to end up the same way. 
But I also don't want him to be the lame kid at school who's left out. And has a locked down phone because his mommy won't let him do anything. If I had felt left out like that growing up, I would have been so resentful and mortified. I actually really like this and I really like that you're seeing a lot of points of view in this because a lot of parents will shut down everything and not understand how that can feel as a child when everyone else is getting it. So I like that you're also taking this into consideration as someone who, you know, was a part of the generation of getting phones young. But I also had unrestricted internet access. My parents didn't know any better, and I saw way too much at a young age. It's even worse today. Not just in an inappropriate way, kids are being influenced to act narcissistic and become materialistic. Not to mention screen time addiction. I'd appreciate your perspective on this as someone who grew up online a lot. I can't ask other parents for advice because most of them have given their kids iPhones with TikTok at five years old. I want to protect my kids. Safety comes first, of course. But also, I want to protect their minds and sense of self, and I don't want them to feel left out. Thanks for reading this, if you do. All right, let's get into this. Okay, my storage on my computer was fully, 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 fully full. So I don't know where it cut me off, but I think I was talking about phones and social media. Um, so again, I'm just going to start from the start. But basically, I really did... You know, I had the family computer that I would upload YouTube videos on and my brother really helped me with that. Maybe whenever I was like, I don't know, I was, I was young then, maybe like seven, eight, nine. And I would, the most I would do on the computer, that was really, really, really kind of overseen by everyone because it was a shared family computer. I would play Club Penguin and the most extreme thing that happened to me was in theory, looking back, I was, you know, probably being talked to inappropriately by like older men on Habo Hotel and I was so naive that I didn't know what was going on. Um, that was probably the most extreme thing that happened. And so I eventually got my first phone, I think whenever I was like nine years old and it was literally like this. It was like this and it had the little keyboard right here and the screen was the size. It had snake and it had the ability to text and call. I, it didn't even allow music to be played if I'm being honest. And the reason for that was so that I could text and call my parents in an emergency whenever I was on school trips. I remember we were going on family holidays, so and it was like a big, big, big park. We were going to France, and we were staying in a caravan site, and it was like a really big caravan site, and it would have been easy to get lost. So it was basically just in case anything happened, I could call my parents. I eventually got my first iPhone in 2013, I think, and it was my dad's iPhone 3GS, and it was a hand-me-down, and I loved that phone, probably still my favorite phone I've had to this day. I loved it so goddamn much, and that was whenever I was really on social media, like my, my own social media, and it was because all of my class were on it, and, you know, there would be meetings about social media and stuff, but at that stage... Even back in 2013, like, it really was seen as so harmless. And obviously, we know now that social media is not as harmless as what we think it is or what we thought it was back then, you know, how parents did. I had a Facebook account for talking to my family. And I think back on Facebook and I'm like, even back then, like, I would get friend requests from people that would be impersonating people. I remember I got a friend request from Tori Vega from Victorious. And I accepted it without telling my parents and eventually they clocked it and was like, delete that. But like, I was like accepting friend requests from people that were pretending to be characters that aren't even real on social media. And that was like, it's just so weird to look back on. And I was having conversations with them as if they were real people. Um, and so that happened. But Facebook was mainly for my family. I had Twitter and I had Instagram. And by Instagram, I mean, I had like 20 did like 50 followers and it was like my dairy people and it would be innocent posting and like that's really it you know and maybe I had snapchat because I was I was a theater kid and we would all snapchat each other but pretty much very innocent but what I would say is the more you got on social media and the the longer I was on social media like the darker things you find and obviously it's it's very well and good now for us to know about all this and it's great that we know it for the newer generation to kind of warn them but like you will hear from people that grew up on stan twitter like the things we saw or people who you know we didn't realize the severity of having unrestricted internet access what what children teenagers can find online and, and how much that can damage them and i think that 
I've thought about this a lot when it comes to like if I ever have kids like how would how would I want to go around this because obviously I know myself what I have seen on the internet and I know what ages I had seen things and you know situations that have happened on my life that have happened because of internet and internet access and stuff and again parents and guardians really only know about the dangers of like what can actually go on in social media now we were always told dangers of social media as stranger danger and stuff but like now i think we really understand like what children are doing online and that's really important um and so anyways I i've gone back and forth in this myself and i think one thing for me is like i would like to say i wouldn't but like i just i think there's something interesting about this because whenever I'm out at a restaurant or whenever I'm whatever and I see like a toddler or a child like glued to an iPad screen, like the iPad baby generation, it makes me sad, but I also understand why the parent or guardian does it. But it's like this instant gratification. And I think there's something really interesting about that there's an entire generation that is growing up on if they cry or if they act bad, they immediately get an iPad in front of them with a show they love. So they're rewarded on, on you know, bad behavior and what kind of addiction things that may lead in a newer generation or you know needing dopamine hits immediately and it's just going to be very interesting how it plays out and this full conversation of like you know children posting on tiktok from very 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 young and it's like it's also interesting because the, the world is such a media moving world, right? And eventually a lot of jobs are going to be to do with computers and online world and stuff. And it's like if you restrict your child from learning how to use iPhones and learning how to use iPads and stuff, then they're going to be delayed in their knowledge of technology, which could actually affect them in the long run, which is weird to say. But also there's so many risks that come with that that it's such an, a tricky one. I think the best thing to do is you're you're talking about you don't want your child to fall behind and I respect that. I think allow your child to have like whatever phone it is, I think by their teenage years for sure because it's a big thing if they don't have that and like everyone in their class does. But I think that there can be rules and there I think the most important thing is open conversations i think parents and guardians now that we know what you know kids see online and stuff like that and how things can happen online with like unrestricted internet access i think the most important thing is to have open conversations like i i promote families now with like their children that are online and stuff having open conversations in depth about the dangers of online and i don't mean just stranger danger i mean going in depth about what people can do on the internet and how you need to avoid that and why you need to avoid that and what you know things you shouldn't be looking up and why you shouldn't be looking them up and how this is bad you know I I just think that I hope that we can get to a place where teenagers are allowed to have phones and there can be an open dialogue that educates them as well because teenagers and children are curious and if they're not having conversations about these things they'll find it out themselves so i think the parent or guardian bringing that conversation to them kind of kills that curiosity hopefully so my advice would be if you think that they would you know be made fun of and not like this, let them have the phone but have conversations daily daily about it and also maybe even conversations nightly about what did you do on your phone today like what what did you what apps did you use who did you talk to I think I think that's good I think that's good and and keeping this open and I, I wish you the best with it and I understand the struggle and I think it's only going to get more and more intense as the generations grow up I wish you all the best with that and I'm so glad I'm not a parent in today's day and age all right let me do another one Oh, some of these headlines are crazy. Oh my goodness gracious me. All right, we'll do one more. Okay, wow. Okay. 
Ooh, sorry. This one is crazy. Boyfriend almost left me at my mom's funeral to help his ex hook up. Okay. I want to read this one and figure out what is going on. Hey, Adam, please keep me anonymous. I'm a 24-year-old girl. My boyfriend is much older, 38. Wow. 24 and 38. Wow. We've been dating since January. My mother passed away earlier this year from illness. I'm so sorry to hear that. It has been devastating for me and my siblings, but I have felt incredibly strong throughout the entire thing and have kept active and responsible. Well, I'm glad to hear that, and I'm so sorry for your loss. I have moments that are challenging, but overall, I've handled it very well. My boyfriend has been a great support for me the entire time, especially considering that it might it happened right after we started dating. A bit of context about his friend. They used to hook up in the past. I haven't pressed for more details because I am a believer in not asking questions that you're not prepared to handle the answers to. I am not opposed to my partner being friends with someone they used to sleep with. However, their specific dynamic is weird. Okay. She's in her 30s and doesn't have any other friends in town that we live in. He also doesn't have many friends and it seems like she's his closest one. Okay. She always goes to him for help and seems to open up to him a lot. That's great that they're close. You're better than me. You're better than me. But three days after my mom died, I met her for the first time and she was very rude to me. Not to mention that I had just chewed out my boyfriend for still having nudes that she had sent on his computer that she had sent him. Which is also very weird and I'm such a firm believer that if you have nudes of a of someone and you're in a relationship and you break up, you get rid of those. You get rid of those. You don't sit on those. You don't keep those. You don't know. I'm a firm believer in that. She completely ignored me until I introduced myself and was generally short to me the entire night. At one point, she said his name in a sweet way and gave him a flirty eye look. I was so annoyed but also unsure if I was looking for something that wasn't there. Anyways, moving on to my mom's funeral. He was initially scheduled to work that day, but I told him that it would mean so much to me if he could go, and so he got his shift covered. That meant a lot to me. We go, and I introduce him to my entire family and many important people in my life. I was a whirlwind of emotions, but I was trying to keep it together. Then, right before the service started, he turns to me and goes, I don't like where this is going. He turns to me and goes, oh, by the way, I have to leave at 5 p.m. to drive the friend to the airport. I was so caught off guard that I couldn't say anything other than um for like an entire minute while I started involuntarily tearing up. I mean, I was already trying to get a grip on my emotions and then I got hit with a fucking bombshell on the most important and emotional day of my life. I told him we should go for a walk and he started apologizing and saying fuck, fuck, fuck over and over again because he knew that it was a bad choice that he had made. I asked him when he made those plans with her and he said a week ago. He had a week to tell me and didn't bring it up until we were at my mom's funeral. I was so upset but trying to keep composure because I was again at my mom's fucking funeral. I felt trapped. I asked if she had any other friends that could take her or a fucking Uber bus. No, I don't like this. He said no. How is that possible? He started making calls to see if someone else could take her. Maybe call an Uber. Call a taxi. Your city's not updated with Uber? Get a fucking taxi. Bus. Train. Carpool. Neighbor. Work colleague. Anyone except for your ex situationship who's at his current partner's mother's funeral. He eventually just canceled on her and she had to pay for parking. Oh, so she can drive herself? She can drive herself this entire fucking time? If he had not done that, I would have broken up with him that day. By the way, while this was happening, my dad started calling me because the service was about to start. So he his, his full situation is now taking you away from your mother's funeral. 
and I had to go read part of the eulogy. We had a conversation about it a week afterwards that I initiated, and it went all right. But it's nine months later, and I still get filled with white hot ra- bl- break up with him. Break up with him. Break up with him. I get filled with hot rage when I think about it because not only is it so fucked up, but you're still thinking about it and angry about it. And as you should be, break up with him. You're also 24 and he's almost 40. Another reason to break up with him. I am. Oh. He blamed himself and said he realized he couldn't do both things. Driving ex situation ship that I used to fuck to the airport. My current partner's mother's funeral. Mm, it shouldn't be a thing. Specifically since she could have drove herself. I said drove. Drove herself. Or driven herself. I kept telling him that it shouldn't have been my problem and that he should have just canceled on her earlier in the week or told you earlier in the week and not hit you in that fucking moment. Oh, this pissed me off. I said that it felt he was more willing to hurt me than disappoint her, which he denies. I love him dearly, but I really don't like this dynamic with the friend. There are more examples of weirdness with her, but I want to keep this somehow brief. I don't want to be controlling, but I don't know if I'll ever feel comfortable hearing about her. When he invites me to hang out with them, why is he inviting you to hang out with them? What kind of boundary can I set? Bonus messy question. Should I finally ask him why they never dated? I never wanted to hear the answer. Thank you for reading. Love you in the channel. Thank you. Um, I think you should break up with him. If I'm being completely honest with you, that is a major sign of disrespect. And just think that he could have taken you if he had left how much that would have added to being at your mother's funeral already. If you love him so desperately, then you can have a sit down conversation with him and say, again, how much it hurt you and give an ultimatum about the friend. Be like, I think you're choosing her over me. Other than that, I think you should break up with him. I think he sounds like a dick. (sighs) Wow, that one really pissed me off. That one really pissed me off. And I'm so sorry that happened to you. Oh, muckers. Well, we'll leave it there. I'm pissed off. If you want to send one in, Adam McIntyre help at gmail.com. I would love to read them. These help the videos keep going. If you keep giving me them, I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.